Happy to have everyone here. <coughs> Beanie Blessings, welcome to Dead Pan Dope Tuesdays with me, Dead Pan Lizzie the Beanie God. This is being recorded on Facebook Live and will be on YouTube. Beanie you Blessings, welcome to Dead Pan Dope oh, Tuesdays with me, the, Dead um, Pan Lizzie the Beanie God. This is being recorded on Facebook Live. All right, I can hear the auto feed of the uh, Facebook. As I was saying, I am Deb Penlis and Vega. This is being recorded on Facebook Live and YouTube. If you don't want to be seen or heard, please mute yourself and your mic and turn your camera off. Please unmute yourself if you do read and mute when you are not reading out of consideration for the fellow artists. Um, this medium is for all, this mic is for all medium, mediums of art and beanies. I can't talk tonight, but it's okay. For those who don't know me, I'm an artist among other professions, a few ground rules, no hate speech or bullying in the space. If I hear any of that, you're getting the boot, no questions asked. Like many of us, um, like many people, I can't talk tonight, it's fine, we're just gonna go with it. Like me, many of us have parallel careers and are here to unwind after a long day's work, so please leave the crappy attitudes and beef behind before entering the space. I don't believe in trigger warnings, given life is one, but if you feel the need to give them, please do so. Each artist will be given five minutes to read or perform tonight. Um, if you haven't already, please DM me and I will add you to the list and I will always announce who is on deck. Um, if you wanna learn more about the Word is Right platform um, and the events we have coming up, we have something almost every day of the week. Please visit the page Word is Right, W-R-I-T-E on Facebook, YouTube, and on Instagram. And also please check out Marissa Prada, who's our executive producer here at Publishing. Uh, house and press red or green books r-e-a-d um if you're interested in putting a book together an anthology um any kind of writing please reach out to marissa and she'd be happy to help you all right so we're gonna get started on deck we have shaki g but to bless the mic first here tonight is daniel vegas what's up party people <laughs> um Good to see you. I got these two pieces I want to do. My first piece is called Storm Gods. And uh, I wrote this, I was sitting at a cafe and it was raining like crazy. And I'm like, huh, this is interesting. Let me just write what I see. So I did, and it goes like this. I need to rhyme. I'm sitting here by my bed, thinking of my next move. I need to get more discipline. My mind needs to be focused, like trying to take, take a part of Rubik's Cube. It's raining, storming at times with the flashes of lightning through my window. I can see the thunder flash like photographs. It's silent, silent enough to hear the crickets, silent enough to hear my thoughts. I write because it's my escape, but also because it's how I find myself. I feel the need to compete, to be the best, to excel, but that feeling in my stomach says, I can go at my own pace. I love it. And I want to see myself as highly recognized as any other. I can see Zeus on a cloud looking down at me. I tend to go back into time to feel how vulnerable I was as a child. Or the first time I recited a poem, I was hungry. Like I am now hungry, like the country hungry. Like not having enough on your plate or walking, through, walking the streets without food and I am indeed blessed. I have never really suffered, nor do I plan on it. Actually, suffering is outdated, but it's a conditioning, a program we have acquired to make someone happy. I say we rebel against these lower vibrational program, and I say we collectively think of what has made us the happiest and do like Peter Pan and fly. Think happy thoughts. I know it might seem corny to some, but your thoughts do move minds. Mountains, terrains, they influence people, actions, states of mind. So take a breath with me and thank the creator for if it wasn't storming today and thundering today, I would not have written this piece. So I leave you with a few words and pray. Your thoughts may be as happy as you are really when you choose to participate in this planet's evolution, when you chose to participate in your development as a species of being human is what we are because we can feel emotions. Human is what we are because we are vulnerable, open to learning and making mistakes. That's what makes us human. So I listen to the storm tell me stories and with faith, I write them down. 
so you can feel human too. So you can feel the anger of war, the distress of losing someone, the pain of crying, the heartbreak of being played or made fun of, the storm gods are upon us. And I guess it's safe to say they were once human too. That's my first piece. That's a great opening piece, damn. I love it, Storm Gods. Makes me think of my brother, Paul Conqueso. I adore him, he's a Storm God. Oh uh, yeah, another... yeah, I got another piece. I got a link with him, I got it right here, let me see. Okay, so this next piece, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get into this one. I'm gonna let go of all the, all the stuff I gotta let go. So this piece is called Iron Poet and is dedicated to every single poet in the world. It goes like this. I'm the next Iron Poet, you can see me on mics. Cause I'ma do more thing than just bringing the light. I'm here to ignite like walking on lava. Elevating high like a spiritual conscious. My content could be considered the hardest. Just play, no I'm not. Yo, I hit like I'm August. The multi-syllabic metaphorical garden. My rhymes can fully dress like a fashion statement. And still I got enough words to rip out pages. Melancholy, but only because I feel the faintest. Ideas spread out like a vegetarian blatant. So real and so raw like an invisible spaceship. And still I consider myself to be part of this matrix where all is thought, but also backed up by some movement. Actions are actions unless you fully compute them. And despite all the heckles, I'm a push through the norm. Like a bodybuilder lifting up his back from the wall. I'm like Atlas holding the world on my shoulders in case I ever do fall. I'll walk on the sky and use the clouds as my phone. And in the middle of chaos, I'll create energy. Lightning straight from the rain droplets that keeps the letter G like God and Trisnick and nature cold like glaciers. But then I heat up like a volcanic crater. Buster rhymes like Buster rhymes whenever I intertwine Spanish with Catalan. May glorious bastards, the homie, the Dalai Lama. Sing like, ooh la la la, that's the way that we rock when we're doing our thing. Ooh la la la. And still I bring historical truth like Egyptian sphinx, knowing to hold roots. Cause all that was water, canoes and train ports for the coming of time. And still I glow light like the sun in my rhymes and speaking sublime with lyrical heights. A canopy is my reality when I casually clear all my casualties, a commodity for economically anthologies is to be possibly like pottery molded into greatness. When my apologies are nothing but hypotheses. Okay, let me reorder my raps. I'm talking about raps like Cleo Cleopatra. Raps like Erica Badu raps. Raps like MCs flowing on the Nile River. Raps either way, it's cool. Raps like Bohemian Rhapsody. My raps can breathe because they take form of their own. So let me kick this rap for the people at home. When my raps can be rapidly scattered into evaporate calories. When my rhymes are like batteries, do I flow like the lottery? One in a million. When words, when I calibrate Colosseums, or I meant to say Colosseums, my words strike true like a storm with a pile of felines, yo. I rewind back to the beginning of this poem. Cause if you miss the purpose, then you're lost in the source. Or should I say lost in the sauce? Either way, I would end it like this. A man in the pond, the command of my tongue. When I seal it with songs, you see our shadows can hold light, but it depends on the storm. Or should I say it depends on the poem? Either way, I rock mics like I'm back in the barn. Iron poet. That is now the new poet chant. I love it. <laughs> Iron Poet. That was absolutely brilliant. But also, like, anyone that mentions Eric Badu in their writing, I just love. That was amazing. Give some love and some noise to Daniel, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Thank you. I love it. I love it. I love it. That was amazing. Um, I always love when you bust the mic. So thank you for being here in the space with us tonight. Um, do you have anything coming up you want to promote, share, social media? Uh, no, you know, I'm, I'm keeping it cool. I got a little couple shows coming up, but you know, I'm about an hour and 30 minutes up north from the city, um, by Harriman. So I might be playing in a poetry slam out in December. Uh, we, we shall see, I'm going to kind of lay low and see kind of uh, what other events come up. Uh, and hopefully praying strong, I can finish this album I've been working on for five years, so close to the deadline. So hopefully I could get that finished. You definitely will, and I can't wait to listen and hear it. I didn't realize you were that close to the city. That's not that's not a big deal. No, it's not that bad. I, I could jump on the train and, and be down there in an hour and a half. 
It's okay. like we- at least to, to Manhattan. You know, once I get into the Bronx or Brooklyn, then it's three hours. But well, yeah. I mean, it yeah. takes three hours just to get sometimes from Manhattan to Brooklyn on the subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> MTA, you, yeah, fix your shit. <laughs> anyway, but we can also escape the city and come visit you. Yeah, that's true too. We could, if we could get a couple of you guys to come out, I would just feature all, like four or five of you guys, you know. So I'll we could talk to some about storm it. gods. I'll talk to some storm gods. They like to yeah go on yeah, long that's... drives. Storm gods like to go on long drives. That's all I'm saying. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Daniel. Um, you got it. Check him out online. Check out his album when it comes out. I know it will be absolutely brilliant. I can't listen. I can't wait to listen to it. Um, and I'm sure we will hear more from him later this evening thank you so much all right on deck we got christopher moore and up to the mic now she is a part of the out loud anthology of red room books she's one of my favorite poets and spoken word artists please welcome shocky g yay that was awesome uh daniel i really liked the pieces you did um so first piece uh i have two short pieces i'm gonna do the first one is rose heart You told me you loved flowers. Ask why I didn't buy you them more often, but you couldn't keep them alive. You said they're meant to look pretty for a while, then die, dry out and become potpourri. So I shouldn't been surprised watching you, palm filled of my rose heart petals, crushing them into dust and spreading it about your memories. At least a part of me will always linger. Hope my scent lasts longer than our love. All right, and the next one's called Drunk. Lonely stumbles in the room at 2 a.m., drunk on her own ego. Says, I wish I knew how to love you. Slurs her words like spoken cursive. Say, remember when, over and over. And when I close my eyes, she makes a screenplay of my subconscious thoughts. My memories on repeat. Yes, I remember the good times with all the loves that didn't last. All the let's just be friends that became strangers. And yet here I am holding back Lonely's hair as she regurgitates all the feelings I wish I'd forgotten, begging her to drink a little less, join me in my sobriety, knowing alone doesn't have to hurt like this. Those are both incredibly impactful. Thank you so much for sharing, Shafi. Always love hearing your words. Do you have anything you want to plug coming up, promote social media? Nope, nothing coming up. Nothing coming up. All right, no worries. Well, if you want to learn more about Shaki and hear more of her poetry, you can always find her here on Dead Pin Dope, and the word is right. All right. On deck, we got Christy Scribbles, and up to the mic now, uh, a member of our Word is Right team here. He posts more poetry every second and fourth Wednesdays of the month here with Word is Right at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please welcome to the mic, Chris from one. Thank you. And also speaking of that, the next more poetry open mic before I begin will be August. No, we know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, July 27th. That extra week in July gets confused. Or maybe the, the extra week in June. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. There's too many, too many fifth weeks here. Yeah, I, I know. I I had like, I don't know, for some reason, I thought there was an extra week until my August features. And then I found out, wait, I'm thinking it's a week ahead and it's not or something. I don't know. Anyway, I just have one. <clears throat> I ran into the Queen of Hearts. Oddly enough, she looked like a friend of mine. She did not ask for my head, but wanted to know who had my heart. No other offering would suffice as her croquet mallet swung back and forth. Like a grandfather clock, as she waited for an answer, she swung once, the left chamber vanished. She swung twice, the right chamber vanished. A crooked crown was kicked away as all my cards came tumbling down. Thank you. Very nicely done. I love that with the hearts. It was beautiful. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, besides more poetry, anything you want to talk about? You got coming up social media? <clears throat> yes, I do. Um, the first week of August, I have two features in one week. Um, 
August 2nd, I am being a featured author on Spofest, um, which is an open mic platform that does once or twice a month, they do a featured author and a featured poet. And my book, Icarus Falls, is going to be raffled off for like a free signed copy. And that same week, August, I think the, la the first Friday is the 5th, I'm going to be featured on Lee Eric Friedman's um, Reach Arts program. That's a Reach Arts open mic, their first Friday open mic. Very nice, very nice. Well, congratulations on all that. We look forward to seeing you and hearing you on the features. And yeah, um, Lee Eric Friedman as well as Shaki and Christopher Moore are part of our Out Loud LGBTQ anthology, which we did viewing at the New York City Poetry Festival. And you can also order now. The book is gone to print and it's out. Um, thank you so much, Chris. We'll hear from you a little later if you stick around. On deck, we got Urban Cowboy Poet, who's a part of the Fierce 15 with me, and also part of the Fierce 15 with me. Um, one of my favorite poets, people, artists. I think I think people are put on this earth to connect and like look out for each other. And I think Christy Scribbles was put on this earth to do that for me and vice versa. So please welcome my sister, Christy Scribbles. Hello, yes, I agree. I'm glad to be here. And um, I always love Tuesday nights. So this is a... Uh, a poem from um, my new book, Sacred Elements of Me. Um, I worked with each of the elements and wrote poetry, and this is from the water section. Okay. Rage against the water. The water's current is strong today. The rains came and filled up its mouth and overflowed its throat and spilled down the spouting side. The water's current is fast today. As I step foot inside of it, I plant my foot heavy upon the rocks at the bottom. I instantly think I shouldn't be doing this and I start to pull my foot away and I hear go forward, go forward. So I steady myself and I lean into the racing river lean into the racing feeling of wanting to run away because I do want to run away, run away from the hard, from the hurt, from the suffering. The world around me confounds me and puzzles my head as pieces seem to be missing. How can we allow suffering, allow starving, allow dividing? How can we hate? The river starts to feel cold upon my legs that are now halfway in and the urge to get out overtakes me. And I start to cry, start to wail, start to understand why I am here. You must push through, I hear in a confident voice. You must push through you. And I stop and I breathe and I push. We must stop and breathe and push. That is where we are at in the dawn of our new world, in the dawn of a new society, one where we are all free, one where we can all eat, one where we all can rest, one where we are all one. So I gather my voice and I gather my sound. I pull it all in and I let it out with a scream. I throw my voice into the wind, into the river, into the earth. I will never stop. I will never stop trying. I will never stop trying to. I will never stop trying to help. As my voice is carried up the gorge, up to source, up the river. I dig my feet in and I start to move slowly at first and then quicker. The, riv riv <laughs> the river's rhythm starts to meld into me and we start to dance and we start to move. We must all move together. We must all push through and find footing and find our voices. We must use our voices. We must become one with the raging river and start to slowly move. As we move together, we will start a motion and we will start to become one with the rage and the current. And before we know it, we will join arms and link together and become as strong as the river. As I continue to move forward, I hear the song start and I see the picture change right before my eyes. The whole scene expands. And now I see how I control the river, how I control the current, how I am the river. I am the river. 
we are the river fighting against the current that is ourselves in every way. The river is made up of us, of our negative thoughts, of our dividing nature, of our consuming more of. As I start to enjoy being inside the river, I quickly realize I can slow the movement. I start to understand the power I hold within me, and I start to laugh and sing and splash. The river laughs back and we dance together, and I dive right in, and we swim, and we swim, and we swim. Thank you. That was gorgeous. That was dope. I really, I really like that. The way you like brought the water into like you made that so physical and then somehow put yourself and immerse yourself within it, like to control all the stuff that happens to us in life. That was beautiful. Thank you. It's so gorgeous. And I got to review her book about a month ago. And you have to buy this book. It's absolutely stunning the way she breaks it down into the elements. Um, it, it took my breath away. So congratulations on the book. I'm so excited um, to get a copy of it at the Poetry Festival this fall and to meet you in person finally and um, watch you bless the stage in person at the new, not just on the Zoom camera. Uh, we have fun. Well, let's just say we have a lot of fun at new with certain elements. You know, elements. Anyway. Give her a follow at uh, Poetry Alchemist on IG, and uh, you can DM her there for a copy of her book and get to know more about her. Thank you so much, Christy. And speaking through 15, Taros Jertsen just entered our space. I hope she'll perform and bless it, um, bless it tonight with us. I got to sing a duet with her at the last hybrid at Noe, sang my favorite Stevie Wonder song, and it was really fun. Um, and here, are you going? And there's her book. Chameleon Chronicles right behind her and I read it and it's beautiful. I have it downstairs. So y'all need to get a copy of these books. They're stunning. Um are you gonna are you gonna read tonight for us, Terry? Sure. Okay, cool. So you'll go after Greg, who is up now if he's ready. You there, Greg? I, I can go after Terry. Okay. Terry, are you okay to go now? I have to unmute myself. I always forget to do that. Um, Let me grab one of the books. Okay. Cool. Yes, read from the book. I was in Paul's workshop the other day and I wrote a lot of new stuff in there, but um, it's very oh, raw. No, raw is the best. I felt that I missed it. I couldn't. I couldn't get to it. But I love Paul. Paul's my brother. I love him so much. And a lot of it was um, around music. So, you know, there's a lot of singing involved, of course. <laughs> and I just feel like I don't know. It's like too much singing for me. Like I can't break it up where it, like it's perfect. Like it's a perfect combination of song and verse. Like. That's that's a talent that I mean you it takes years probably to get to that point. I'm just gonna flip through here and read the first thing that I I lie because I didn't want to read that. Love is a mystery I don't understand. Once sizzling due to a five-year self-imposed abstinence from another dysfunctional pairing. And when the fast was broken, thirst quenched over and over again until left exhausted of any future desire, came 10 years of obligatory wifely duties, leaving me exhausted of any future desire to sizzle, left to fizzle. That was my 10 years. Wait, that was 10 years of my life that I will never get back, which left me exhausted over the futility of sizzling sex and marriages that die a slow and pointless death, unions that bring relief when finally over, fractured relationships that still hold the mystery of how they were sewn together with a dull needle. When we last spoke, we both agreed that we failed to answer this impossible question or silence the infinite yearning of brokenheartedness 
caused by misunderstanding this mysterious thing called love. And then I have, you want me to read one more? Yeah, go for it. Let me see. This is kind of like um, erotic. Okay, we're going with rock. I was literally just going to say, read more about sizzling sex. Yes, I'm going to. Un this is called Unwanted Gift, though. So the title kind of throws you off. It doesn't really let you know that there's anything erotic in here until you get to the end. <laughs> Surprise! Okay, did you ever get one of those gifts that was an afterthought? With no effort made to hide that sad, sad fact. Moreover... You tried to be gracious and smile, but all you really wanted to do was throw it down on the ground and sit on it or step on it. Feeling guilty upon realizing they were Valentine's Day confections symbolizing love. This made you reconsider this feeble attempt as the best they had to offer at the time. On that note, did you ever eat a bite of cake that was so subpar that you wanted to spit it out and scrape the nasty off your tongue with a knife. Nothing like the cupcake war winner down the street. It was a near miss, only a block away. Afterthought caused them to buy Wawa brand, the like of which were so tasteless and processed that on my deathbed, I will surely be nicely preserved. On the other hand, have you ever wished to be slathered from head to toe with the creamy filling and gorgeous frosting of the most satisfying cake that ever longingly graced your lips? Have you ever imagined your partner assisting in this cacophony of sweetness by licking said cake off places that you cannot reach? Why does my mind always return to this scenario? Maybe this is my happy place. I've heard of such retreats of the mind, or is this just another fantasy? Am I searching for a distraction that completely engages my senses? I have no idea. Maybe in this sensual scenario, it is just an afterthought where no one gets hurt. So that's in the book. I know, I think, I, that's one of my favorite poems in the book. What? <laughs> That's one of my favorite poems in the book. Is it? Yeah. I know, because it takes a turn. Like, you know, you're talking, I'm talking about something disgusting first, and then it takes a turn. No. Not disgusting. Erotica is a spectrum. I mean, yeah. I'm speaking erotic, yeah. I'm speaking it erotica. Takes you to, right. No, it takes you to wherever, you know, your fantasies take you. And speaking of erotica, we're both, me and Terry, both featured in Touching Tongues with just the first anthology with Red or Green Books, 31 Brave, um, female identifying codices in there talking about what turns us on. I don't know, the last girl I hooked up with was an unwanted gift, but sometimes that just happens. So I appreciate that one. Anyway, get her book. But I, we must be on the same wavelength because I can't believe I picked that one and that was your favorite one in the book. You know. We are, we're saying the same, Stevie Wonder songs. Telepathy. <laughs> yes, the Beanie God, Stevie Wonder. I don't know Rada. my right now. I have like a conditioner in my hair, so it's all slick back on the back of my head. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Well, get her book at the New York City Poetry Festival and order, order it now. You can. What's your IG handle one more time? I Funny's Mom. I-F-U-N-N-I-E-Z <laughs> Mom at Instagram. Or Teresa Rose Jurison on Facebook. I have yes. Cash App and PayPal. Yeah, so buy her book, come meet her at the Poetry Festival. Are you going to stay for hybrid that weekend? I'm not sure what's happening. That whole weekend's going to be one of those miss oh, tour. I can't predict. Your audio is going in and out. I know her audio is going in and out. Oh no. 
And he's also the person I'm supposed to be staying with. So I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't have a moment where he says, nah, it's not going to work this week. <laughs> I didn't hear that because your audio cut out. Who are you supposed to be staying with? I'm supposed to be staying with that. The person you met him the last time I, I came in and I was at Lincoln Center and you guys were there and I was with um, this guy, short guy, and then my husband. And the, the short guy is the guy who lives in New York. And he's a high school friend of mine who I've been friends with for, oh my gosh. We had a 30 year reunion <laughs> like 20 years ago. <laughs> no, it wasn't that long ago, I'm, I'm exaggerating. But I've been friends with him that long. Like um, <coughs> we, were, we were part of a threesome, which not taking that in the sexual, manner but we were we were like the three musketeers and we went everywhere and did everything together and um and then um i wrote about one of the one of those friends of mine was the one i wrote the poem about the plane crash that was about him <laughs> so yeah he's no longer with us but um so now it's just the two musketeers <laughs> and um we're not really the musketeers anymore because we hardly ever see each other. And the only time we ever see each other is I, I haul ass into New York City and I sort of just plot myself on his apartment and say, here I am, I'm staying, you know. For the uh, well, my condolences that your friend is no longer with us. Um, yeah. But hope you will be at hybrid because we got to do a, a duet in person too, not just over Zoom. And Jeff Cotro is here and I'm sure he's wondering what the hell he walked in. Yes. <laughs> Hey Jeff, Jeff, I live in Toronto. Hi, Jeff. How's it going? Good. Thanks Good for coming way. by. Are you well, doing poetry or just talking? We're doing well, both. That's what Dead Pan Dope is. We talk, we chat, sometimes we do comedy, sometimes we read poetry and music. But well, um, by Terry's book, Chameleon Chronicles. I hope Jeff will perform after UCP. Are you ready, Jeff? I mean, are you uh, at UCP? I don't have anything right now, but I can. Well, UCP, I guess, goes first. Yeah, we're going to go to UCP, who's also part of the Fierce 15. Got to get his book, Urban Cowboy Poetry. And then we'll hear from our buddy Jeff Castro across the border. There it is. There's his show. Yeah, hi. I'm on now. <clears throat> yeah, get my book. $15, like most of these books. Um, you can PayPal to UrbanCowboyPoet at gmail.com. I'll put that in the chat. And my videos, too. Um, I usually do this from memory, but I'm pretty exhausted today. I don't trust my memory. It's a great read, Christopher Moore says. All right, good review. Thank you. Mistake on the lake. I haven't done that. But at Christmas, Henry woke from his sleep to find a present, a brand new Jeep. His memory slips during holiday cheer. He bought it himself and drank lots of beer. He gathered his buddies. Said, why don't we take my new Jeep down to Watson Lake and hunt some ducks to feast the new year? They all agreed and ordered some beer. Now, any lake they could have chosen in winter in Michigan was frozen. I hope there'll be ducks came the season for deer, Arnold declared as he chugged down a beer. They piled in the Jeep. They packed a lot of duck calls, decoys, guns, and duck shot. Henry's black Labrador rode in the rear, lying on several cases of beer. They drove the Jeep out on the lake. Sam wondered if the ice might break. It's plenty thick, no need to fear. Stop your worrying and pass the beer. There's no patch of waters. What do you think, boys? No pond for the ducks or to place our decoys. We need a hole so ducks will come here, Henry explained as he opened the beer. Now, Joe worked at a construction site. He said, on the job, we use dynamite. So just in case I brought some here. What a great idea. Get that man a beer. Joe said, here's a stick we can use. Toss it far. It's got a short fuse. Henry claimed I can throw it clear. I'll warm up with another beer. First light the fuse, then throw it and run. 
may not be legal, but it'll get the job done. The explosion might knock you back on your rear. We'll watch and laugh and cheer you on with a beer. He flung it way out, but before it hit, his dog went racing after it. Sam cried, oh no, he'll bring it back here. We're all gonna die. I need a beer. He was a retriever through and through. Fetching was what he was born to do. The dog thought, I'll bet they'll be glad that I'm here. They might reward me with some of their beer. The guys realized that they'd made a mistake as the dog brought the dynamite back across the lake. They were shouting and waving, trembling with fear. They were shaking so much they were spilling their beer. Henry shot at his pooch with a loaded duck shot. Didn't hurt him much, but sure stung a lot. He wants me to hurry. I'll shift to high gear, the retriever surmised, looking forward to beer. Henry cussed at his dog, quickly counted a 10, and picked up his rifle and shot him again. Please, God, if you can save us here, Henry prayed, I might give up drinking beer. Why is he shooting at me? I've done nothing bad. The dog concluded, my owner's gone mad. He ran for cover to the first place near, under the jeep, which was still full of beer. The poor critter died in a big explosion. That part of the lake was no longer frozen. Henry cried, yikes, we're stranded here. There goes my jeep and my dog and our beer. With all their stuff sunk, they were plumb out of luck. But some decoys survived and lured many a duck. Arnold lamented, sure, now they come here. Look, they're laughing at us and drinking our beer. Ain't no way Henry's insurance would pay for a brand new Jeep to die that way. He'll be making payments year after year. He won't even be able to afford to buy a beer. Thank you. Yes, UCP, I loved it. Duck decoys. Yeah, I love it. A lot of beer. I will be in New York at the festival. And people say oh, they don't want to pay shipping. They want to buy my book in New York. Of course, they'll make me get an extra set of luck. I mean, check luck, pay to check lug luggage to bring all the books. But that'll be on me. Um, and the, the what you call hybrid with the with the karaoke after with that's that weekend. Somebody Nick was saying it'd be so crowded that week. Everybody's in town. I don't. It's gonna be hard to get a slot. So I don't know. Well, no, you just have to. You have to just get there around. Hmm. Doors open at six thirty, so I would get there maybe around five forty-five on that Saturday for slot. I do know for a fact that a lot of us who regularly perform at um, the new hybrid, the second Saturday of the month, uh, yeah, second Saturday of the month, uh, we're gonna, um, that'll be not, second Saturday in, in yeah, that, that's the, the, the first day of the festival, so it's right after yeah. we leave yeah. our time. Some of us are going to Pleasant Gesture and not, sign, we will go and support and do karaoke, but some of us are not going to perform so that, um, those of you coming to town do get a slot. Um, so I guess you take a ferry and then you take a subway into Yeah, well, you'll take York. the ferry back and then take the subway down. That's how, I mean, unless someone drives, but I'm probably going to take the subway because it's easiest. Well, you got to like take a, the ferry to the island, right? So the festival, yes. have you been to the festival before? I have not. It was this time last year. Um, was it, you, it was this time last July. year. Yeah. But I was in Seattle with my ex-girlfriend, so I was not there. Did but, they have one um, last year? It was pandemic. Yeah, they did. No, they did. I just was in Seattle. I've never been. So to it's an outdoor time. event, I assume. Right? Yep, it's outdoor, and it looks fun. And then after the first day, we'll those of us who want to, we'll go down to the cafe on the Lower East Side and the New York, yeah, hang out. And then a I lot mean, of people will be going, I guess, from the from yeah. the festival to the New York. Oh yeah, and then those of us who regularly know, like, perform with each other, know each other through the Zoom verse we've decided to not perform so that you guys get a slot because those there are a lot of people that perform at hybrid that you guys never see on zoom they just perform in person at the cafe and they're amazing 
yeah. so they might not know you guys that well. So we want to make sure that you all get to bless the new stage. So we're going to take a night off and just watch you from the audience because usually oh, cool. there's about yeah. Because we yeah, I haven't I haven't been in person obviously, but oh, it's, it's hard for me to watch the hybrids. People, the camera's not on the face, and I really don't hear it that well. The the people alive, the people on Zoom, I can hear fine. Usually it's those of us you know on Zoom, we're all kind of hanging in the back at the bar, just hanging out. And but I'll be there in person. So. You will. You'll be sitting at the bar with us. And then a lot of people we don't know, uh, they like to be more close to the action. So they sit in the in the audience seats. Or you can sit in the balcony. And I kind of bar sing, well. Singing and after we're karaoke. They're, they're so. singing. We take half an hour, mingle. I usually run out and get Chinese yeah, food because yeah. I'm usually hungry and stoned. And I get some Chinese food, and then I come back and I sing. So well, you know I'm a singer, and you know I'll be singing. Yeah, we're so excited. But yeah, get his book, Urban Cowboy Poetry, Urban Cowboy Poetry on YouTube, and his tape house, Urban Cowboy Poet. Yeah. And he'll also have copies at the festival where I'm going to get to meet him. I will say, though, our next performer, um, it was really fun to watch him tell the moon, go fuck itself, at hybrid on the big screen. It was, I got some belly laughs out of it. I really enjoyed it. So please welcome to the stage. I haven't seen him on Dead Tando for a while. The guy who we are constantly trying to beat each other for first slot at Newo. And then Ned Barrow Scott first slot at Newo last night. Jeff Cotro. Thanks, Lizzie. Uh, yeah, that weird, that moon poem, uh, I used to do it live and it didn't get much of a reaction. And I wondered, are they scared? Do they really think I'm going to be mad? But when I started doing it on Zoom, it went over great. So I don't know why. It's, it's, oh, we loved it. Yeah, you guys, can't hear, you guys can't hear us in the cafe, but we loved it. It was a great little oh, night. We were belly laughing. It was, I yeah. loved it. If we do another poet appreciation night, I want to cover it. I loved it so much. Oh, OK. Well, remind me of that, then I'll send it I to will. you. Um, Yes, I will also be in New York that weekend for the festival. And I plan to come to the New Yorican on the 9th for the, the night that Marissa's hosting. And hopefully I can get to the hybrid and karaoke the next night. I would love to perform on the stage. I have been to the New Yorican several times in the past and performed on open mics, but this time people will actually know who I am, or at least a few of you will. So that would be that would be a great experience. So I'm looking forward to that and seeing some people in the person and seeing that you have legs and whatnot. Um, so here's a new piece. I'm sure a couple of you at least have heard this one already. This is called Google is your friend. Hey, you know that new Twitter meme? What new Twitter meme? The one with the kangaroo and the Dr. Pepper bottle. Yeah, well, about it. I don't really get the joke. What's it about? Google is your friend. Excuse me? Google is your friend. Why don't you look it up online? I could look it up, but you're right here. I thought you might know. Well, it's not worth my time to explain. Look it up. Um, okay, fine. By the way, I missed the Jays game last night. You know if they won? Giggle is your friend. Sorry? Giggle is your friend. Just look up the score. But you're a Jays fan. I thought you might have watched the game. Yeah, I did, but it's not my responsibility to relay baseball scores to you. I didn't say it was anybody's responsibility, because it isn't. Go look it up like a normal person. I, okay. Fine, I will. Good. Sure. Now I gotta head to work soon. Oh, okay. How's the company doing? Google is your friend. Hmm? Google is your friend. Look it up on the stock exchange or something. But I was just asking out of curiosity. Since you work there, they don't pay me to satisfy your curiosity. That's on you. Look it up. But I was just making conversation. Well, I don't owe you conversation. I don't owe you anything. All right. So there. Why does it offend you so much when I ask you a simple question? It doesn't offend me. I'm not offended. You react as if you are. That's pretty presumptuous of you to assume you know how I feel about anything. I feel fine if you must know. So why do you lash out at me over a question? I'm not lashing out. I'm just doing you the favor of pointing out you can easily look it up. Google is your friend. But Google is so impersonal. Isn't it more fun to ask another human being? Isn't that what human connection is all about? Isn't it more satisfying to share questions and answers and points of view with other minds? Isn't it more progressive to have a society that openly asks questions and discusses things with nuance and exploration of ideas instead of just silencing each other, isn't it? 
No, it isn't. Uh, okay. I'll tell you what it is. It's a sign of your toxic laziness and immaturity. It's a sign you can't be bothered to take responsibility to stay informed. You're so self-absorbed and devoid of empathy that you're willing to waste other people's time manipulating them with inane questions. I think you need serious psychological help. I think you need to take some time to reconsider the way you treat other people. Until you do that work on yourself, you should probably stop trying to connect with others since you clearly have no people skills. All right, I apologize. Do you even know what you're apologizing for? For um, everything you just said. And I'll work on myself. Sorry, I didn't realize how you felt. Felt about what? About people asking questions. I didn't know you felt that way. Well, Google is your friend. What? Google is your friend. You should already know. If you looked it up, you would have found my blog, which explains everything I feel. Don't you read my blog? You know something? Sure. Google is my friend. Yes, it is. But you sure the fuck aren't. Goodbye. Hey, hey, where are you going? Come back. Oh, why am I always so lonely? Well, at least Google is my friend. So that was a relatively new piece called Google is your friend. Uh, if I have time for a second one, um, I'll do one. Uh, an excerpt from this poem was uh, is is appearing in the new Brownstone Poets Anthology, which I just got today. So this is the this year's Brownstone Anthology. And the poem is called Vanilla Ice Cream People. From the makers of Vanilla Ice Cream, we now bring you Vanilla Ice Cream People. You find them in all the monster malls and gated backyards, never leaving a location without a car. Vanilla Ice Cream People, the people who find butterscotch ripple too dark and dangerous. The way great artists suffer for their visions, vanilla ice cream people ache to achieve the perfect front lawn. When vanilla ice cream people wanna rock out, they blast the neighbors with Celine Dion and Barry Manilow. When vanilla ice cream people want a fun night out, they shove the kids into the SUV and dash to pickle barrel in a softball game. When vanilla ice cream people want a good laugh, they count on Garfield, or an afternoon of Who's the Boss reruns. When vanilla ice cream people want to improve their minds, they scan their bookshelves for the works of Anthony Robbins and Philip McGraw. Vanilla ice cream people dream vanilla ice cream dreams. One lady says, today I'm a sales rep, but if I apply myself and work hard and set clear goals and steel myself to face tough challenges in a few years, why, I could be assistant to the manager. No, dare I say it? Assistant manager. And one man says, I'm so depressed, but I'll feel better after I knew buy that new waffle maker by Cuisinart. Vanilla ice cream people know how to make benign conversation that offends nobody. How's it going? And Mondays, eh? Or if they feel plucky, you're working hard or hardly working. Ha <laughs> ha! And vanilla ice cream people have bedrock values. They know what is important in life. Like a two-story house with a giant garage, housing at least two cars, and the sexiest lawnmower in the lane. And babies. Barrels and barrels of babies. And more babies. There can never be too many babies. Babies raised more by Disney and football than by their parents, who just pay for swimming and piano lessons. Babies who eat vanilla ice cream or plain chips for every dessert and never question the meaning of it all, and then grow up to be the next generation of vanilla ice cream people. Vanilla ice cream people who would rather die than give Neapolitan a fair try. Thank you. That was Vanilla Ice Cream People. My name is Jeff, and I wrote this <laughs> novel, which is available from Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I'm going to put stuff in the chat in case some of you don't know that. Yes, please put in the chat, you can put in the Facebook chat. We're going live right now on the Word is Right page. And yes, buy his novel, Hate Story. I'm excited to get a copy and meet him um, in New York City in a couple months. I guess I'm a vanilla ice cream person because I do love Barry Manilow and Celine Dion uh, pridefully. I have no shame in that. You're a better Canadian than I am. <laughs> like I've never Celine been to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in Canada for the first time, as far as I know, next summer in the 
middle of um alberta i think you said yeah somewhere in the middle of alberta jasper yeah jasper, i think you said it's yeah it's it's oh God, i have to ask him it's somewhere that once you get off a six hour plane ride you drive four hours <laughs> so you yeah, said like a true said like a true new yorker who doesn't want to do that <laughs> so you're flying to Banff, I take it? Banff for yeah. uh, yes, okay. we're flying to Banff. Okay. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and then driving four hours yeah. in July. And I go to New York, I just take a train or a bus to the city from the airport and everybody's happy. Toronto's easy. Yeah, same time Toronto. zone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. My brother would never make anything easy. <laughs> He's not watching this. So I can say that. He also knows I'm a little cranky about the fact that it's a 10 hour trip and I get car sick. So thanks, Matt. <laughs> anyway, buy Jeff Crotro's book, Eight Story. Come meet him at the New York City Coach Festival. Find him at the New York Weekend on Mondays and Thursdays. And um, he will definitely outbeat me this Thursday because I will be performing live in San Francisco and not on New York. So he will certainly be ahead of me, him and Pinky. <laughs> But I can't predict next Thursday. We have to see who wins that race next. I Thursday. won't be there this Thursday. Actually, I got IRL plans. Oh, IRL! We're talking, talking in like an actual, an actual live reading. Yes. It's my friend's yeah. reading, not mine, but still. Oh, that's cool. Well, someone else is going to get to bless the new space with Ray Jane before me and Jeff this Thursday, and then we'll we'll come take it back next week. Mm. But always good to hear you, Jeff. Um, love your work. Thank you for being here. We're going to do one more round here at Dead Pan Dope tonight. So on deck, we have um, Christopher and up back to the mic, we have Daniel. Did you say up next? Are you good with that? You're up next? Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't sure if you said after Mike Daniel or up next. I was like, oh, let me ask. Up to the mic, we have Daniel. I, okay. I haven't been able to talk all night and I'm sober. We're, we're just going with the fact that I can't <laughs> talk sober. I feel you. Okay. Um, so this poem is called Penmanship. And I don't think I've ever re read, really read it. It's my, I've, I've written it a, few, a little while ago. So let's see if I can get through it. Penmanship. My mic is my sword. My voice be the call for action. On the front lines in a world where most people never realize what's happening. My pen is my gun and the ink be the bullets I use to get my message across. However, I'm not in this to aim at someone, but I will save a life. I keep my pen by my side and write out a sketch from time to time on how to keep the journey going. Through space or water, through land or sea, through tough times and pleasant, I move like degrees. Sometimes I overstretch myself, but my neuroplasticity keeps my brain learning in order to maneuver through the time and space. Through my rewiring, my mind is smart and when I load my weapon of choice, the pen and the pad, my rhymes be portals to the future of what can be. Cities, cities can be created from the energy of the galaxy. Spirals and stars, the sun can teach us so much like how to cross over to another universe if we go through it. I just don't know if it's physical or through the mind. However, I know that it's a lie for I have felt it. I have spoken moons into existence and relied on the rest of the planets for breath. However, being human is not being still or alone or incapable as being a vehicle for the higher self, you in your God state. My penmanship is how I communicate through multiple realities, holding the unknown at bay. We are fierce, vulnerable, which means we can feel not that we are weak. So use your feelings and tune into like dials in space with a supernova, classings and opening up. My pen is my gun and my words are the bullets that protect me. Don't put your pen down, for it might leave you too open. Release your fears and your inhibitions and step into the front lines, the front lines where a performance can save a life, where a performance can save a life and bring you back from the dead like the Dead Sea Scrolls spoken in time, like a memory that keeps coming back because your subconscious mind is trying to tell you to pay attention to the detail. Stand with me, boots laced up and fatigued with pockets perfect to hold the promise you made to this world that suffer place i dig into my notebook a hologram of how my mind works i put on my hat take a deep breath 
and remind myself of my penmanship. Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Thank I always, you. I always appreciate your work and hearing you a little poem about penmanship. Thank you so much. All right. Well, catch catch what he's got going on in the future. We've got a lot of great things coming up um, here in New York State. Thank you so much, Daniel. All right. On deck, we got Terry Rose and back up we have Christopher Reed. Okay, I think I'll read um, an older poem of mine. Um, back in, I would say, 20, I think 2015, 2016, I published my first poetry book ever. Since I am a history nerd, it was a book of history poems. And uh, a few years after that, I created a volume two. And this one's from volume two that I did about two years ago. Um, this one is about like imperialism in the 19th century. So it's called All But the Crumbs. <clears throat> 19th century imperialism has reared its ugly head. Africa, a diverse, wonderful continent is divided up. British, French, Germans, Italians, Heck, even Belgium gets a piece of it as if it were a cake being cut up. Don't forget Asia too. The Brits take from the Chinese, French get a big chunk of Indochina, the Germans, well, they were just happy to be a part of something international. <clears throat> even Uncle Sam was his piece of the pie as well. Guam, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Hawaii, you name it. Soon the whole world is divided up piece by piece until there is nothing left but crumbs. I love a poem about history because I'm a history book as well. I love well, that's history. from, yeah, that's from volume two of my um, uh, poetic um, timeline book. Um, I titled it Fit as a Bull Moose Marching Through Georgia. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, congratulations on that beautiful work. Always love to hear you. Always love having you in our space. Check out his mic. More poetry with us at the word is right. Um, and you're back. You're back next Wednesday, right? Or not next Wednesday or the Wednesday? After? Yeah, next Wednesday, the 27th. Next Wednesday, 27th. Be on word is right at 7.30 p.m. Thank you so much, Chris. All right. Gonna get a couple more poets before we close out going to have um, Urban Cowboy Poet on deck and back up to the mic, the author of Chameleon Chronicles, Terry Rose Dritson. I think she's still there. I am. Um, I'm looking for, whoops, I was looking for a different poem. Okay, so, whoops, okay. My hair is a loud now, it's a mess, but ignore my hair. <laughs> Um, hmm. I'm going to do one of these thingy ones. I don't, know. I don't know if I like any of them, but um, I like this one, I think. Hmm. Here's the beginning of that one. So far away, doesn't anybody stay in one place anymore? It would be so nice to see your face at my door. It doesn't help to know that you're just time away. Long ago, I reached for you and there you stood. Holding you again could only do me good. How I wish I could, but you're so far away. Painted a picture about this time, an infatuation. So far away were your morals and values. What were you doing with me? You could have been arrested. I was 17. You were so sincerely drunk or stoned, and that was not on love. Your girlfriend, who was not me, wanted to kill me. 
I could see it in her eyes as she passed me by in the girls' room of the school. I felt her hatred searing through my bones and burning my face and hands. Scalding anger lit in her face. I ran out of that place. I told you she was scary and you said, oh, don't worry about her. She won't bother you. I was not convinced and later I ended it because even though he was my first real love interest, I knew he could not be trusted. We were, we were, I don't know how this even fits in here. We were just reckless and faded and full of music and shit. Roundabout was my first concert and the sound was definitely loud, deafeningly loud. <laughs> I could not make out the lyrics. I was bending in the knees, head pounding, pressure mounting. I wanted to scream, yes, musical masturbation. <laughs> So that's a cacophony of, of just a bunch of things from my past. <laughs> All of I this love is it. like that. Oh, you do? I love it. It's like it's like kind of like a nonsense poem. Yeah, it's just all over the place. I mean, who doesn't want to read a nonsense poem about musical masturbation? <laughs> I do. And it has an erotic theme because musical masturbation. You know, you gotta masturbate to something. <laughs> right there's I so many, oh. huh? i was gonna say there's so many funny posts lately on um instagram um crystal clear poetry i don't know if you're a fan of hers oh my god every day she posts like two or three like really good ones like <laughs> and they're all of you know <coughs> sexual orientation hilarious though i i do see her stuff occasionally on ig and it's it's funny well, buy Terry's book. It has some, it's a brilliant book. I love it. Neil and Conkles. Um, so check her out. I funny mom. You can see at the New York Post Cafe and New York City Poetry Festival with all of us in September. Always happy to have you with us, Terry. Thank you so much. All right. Thank on, you. Of course. All right. On deck, we're going to have uh, Jeff Cotro. And back up to Mike, we have Urban Cowboy Poet with his new book, Urban Cowboy Poetry. Oh, hi. Um, I'll read another one from my book again. Unless you want me to sing. Okay. You can sing. What? I love when you, you can sing if you want to sing. That's what I was thinking. There's a piece that Jeff did a while ago, and it said it remind me of this weird Al Yankovic song that my quartet used to do. And he sort of did it as, Al, Weird Al just sort of did it as a country song, but we did a little slightly different version. But, um, and we we set it up like, yeah, you're going with this girl for a while and you're she finally asks you how you feel about her and you're trying to put your thoughts together how you love her. Um, and it goes like, like this. Oh, my love, can't you see? You mean all the world to me. I can't think or do a thing without your love. Oh, I couldn't live a single day without you. Actually, on second thought. Well, I suppose I could. Yes, I could. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, honey, you're the greatest. Well, at any rate, I guess you're pretty good. You're rather close to what I'm trying to find. Probably that's why my, my love for you is fairly strong, fairly strong. And I swear I'm never going to leave you, my darling, at least till someone better comes along. You're pretty close to what I've always hoped for. You're sort of everything I've ever wanted. You're not perfect, but I love you anyhow. You're the woman that I've always dreamed of. Well, not really, but you're good enough for now. Oh, I love that we got to hear you sing. And I That's, can't wait to hear you sing at the Poetry Cafe in September. 
What's that it? was funny. That was good. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Thanks. I said I said, yeah, I love Weird Al. I said I can't wait to hear you sing at the Poetry Cafe live in September. Oh yeah, yeah, at the karaoke. Oh, sing at the fest. I'll probably do my Billy Billy Joel parody. My own work. Not, I'm was, excited. I'm excited for all of it. Okay. I am. You guys are gonna hear me sing, not over Zoom. I think. Yeah, I don't think anyone in this room has heard me sing live. Very different than over Zoom. But fun. Well, buy his book, Catch Me at the Poetry Festival, Urban Cowboy Poet. Um, yep, beautiful book with beautiful cover right there. Go get it. Always good Here's to see you, 15. Greg. Here's 15. Always happy to see you, Greg. Congratulations on the book. All right. And our last poet of the night is back across the border in Canada is Jeff Paltrow. Okay, so as long as we're doing parodies now, I've got a couple that you might have heard before. <laughs> May 25th, 787, when the Star Wars movie come, it was business as usual for galactic bounty scum. Oh, Greedo, 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 Greedo. Oh, Greedo, 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 Greedo. Give him money, give him money, or Han is dead, or Han is dead. Oh, my lighting is falling. When he hit most Eisley to collect old Chabba's pay, Solo fried him with one blast and buggered off to the docking bay. Oh, Greedo, Greedo, Greedo's Greedo. Oh, Greedo, Greedo, Greedo's Greedo. Payback Jabba, payback Jabba, or Han is dead, or Han is dead. You can shoot down a smuggler, but you can't shoot down the force. Not that Greedo had a chance, Solo creamed his ass, of course. Oh, Greedo, Greedo, Greedo's Greedo. Oh, Greedo, Greedo, Greedo's Greedo. Corner Chuta, Corner Chuta. Now Greedo's dead. Now Greedo's dead. <laughs> And the eyes of the world saw Han shoot first. Han shot first. That was Greedo, which I'm sure you know is taken from Biko by Peter Gabriel. And I'm just looking up another one, which is also movie themed, because apparently that's all I can ever see of the world is movies, apparently. Um, and this one, the, the joke here, I know this joke is 27 years late, but I didn't see the movie until for the first time until last year. So take what you can get. <clears throat> Desperado, our Roberto Rodriguez movie. The soundtrack is groovy, but there isn't much plot. Steve Buscemi. He tells a long-winded story, and the violence is gory, but it's all for naught. Tarantino tells a wacky joke about a penis that gets runny. There's an old guitar case full of guns and stuff. Cheech Marin plays a bartender, but he really isn't funny enough 
Desperado, why don't you have better writing? All those gunmen fighting, is that all you've got? Selma Hayek, oh Selma Hayek, she owns her own bookshop. But that's where her character stops. But that's where her character stops. Yeah, that's where her character stops. She's just there. She's just there to look hot. And of course, during that song, you, you were supposed to gaze up like the guy on Seinfeld saying, oh, that's problem. But those are my two parodies for the night. And, and I loved it. Awesome. No, that was great. I loved it. And Selma Hayek is hot. And that's a great way to end the evening. I want to thank all the artists that came out tonight and blessed the space and everyone that watched. A pleasure to always have you. Um, I can't think of a better way to end the evening than Selma Hayek and Jeff Quattro singing parody songs and taking us out with the Beanie Blessings. So when you're ready, Jeff. Okay. For, for the six of us remaining, here are the Beanie Blessings. We close out our time together, staring up at the same sky, whether the sun kisses down on your gentle face, Pan Ku, the cotton candy clouds begin to swirl in the early evening, the crescent moon fades in as the constellations begin to dance throughout the night. We all look up at the same sky. Thank you for blessing the sky, soil beneath our feet, and our family with your presence and art. Thank you taking the time to create Thank you for holding space. May you squirt out poems kitty style in dreamland. May we always have beanies to keep us warm and stylish. This has been the Deadpan Dope Tuesday Open Mic with The Word is Right, hosted by Deadpan Lizzie, the Beanie God. On behalf of our community, I, Jeff Cottrell, bid you adieu. Until next time, Beanie Blessings. Beanie Woo! Blessings.